Good morning, South Beach. Welcome to podcast number three, uh, the world famous Fish Street Gym podcast. Today we have my partner, Dino Spencer, and Noel Michalian. This is not Vitaly Klitschko. I know he looks like him, fights like him, actually he's a little better, but he's our guest on the third podcast uh, here at uh, the Fish Street Gym Live. Live meaning we're actually here at the gym. And... Um, Noel here is probably going to be the number one or two cruiserweight in the world for the WBC. He just won the international title, the international belt, in December. And he's trained by us, but mostly uh, my partner Dino. So welcome to the show, and I'll let, uh, let the guys take over here. So as, as you just heard that uh, your, your name alone, what kind of name is that, your last name? Okay, yeah. It's yeah. Armenian. Armenian. So in Germany, but with the uh, Armenian background. Very interesting. Um, where where have you trained before? Well, I've trained in Germany. I've trained in, in Holland. I've trained in many places in the States and in Poland. So much experience in professional games. And what's your record now? Uh, Twenty-seven and uh, two. Twenty-seven and two. Yeah. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, Dan Raphael, who's not the most optimistic guy in the world, uh, gave wrote about him as being the. <clears throat> Robbery of the year was it 2019 or 18? Yeah, 18. 18. Robbery of the year. So he fought for the world title against Bradis. Yeah, inside the World Boxing Super Series. It was a big scandal. Yeah, it was two lots in my career. I actually know the losses, so I'm actually undefeated. But everybody in the game knows that. So can't leave it to the judges. Exactly. So I got so lucky from just to walk in the door with this unbelievable background, unbelievable record, and so have him start training with us here. How is training here at the Fifth Street Gym? different from places you've trained in the past? Well, I love to train here. I love your energy. And Tom has much experience in the professional game outside of the ring. And, well, it's a boxing gym, and it's, it's not that different than anywhere else, but... I, I guess the people make the gym. Yeah, exactly. Gotcha. And when, well, how, you just recently fought for the international belt, and how was that, how did that fight work out for you? Was it, it's appeared to be a very easy win for you. It was pretty easy, it was a good comeback fight. I was in the ring for a year because of COVID and like some other issues, but we did a, a first fight together. It was very successful and we partnered up with a good team and I feel very, very good with you guys and I'm hoping to succeed uh, even more in the future. You know, when I hold pads for him, it gives me the first time I really get a sense of the fighter, the sense of our, our the feel, the connection, and uh, it, was, it went smooth very the very first time, which was interesting because he's got so much experience with, with so many different coaches. But the power, my shoulders are continuously aching from the power. So when I saw him punch this poor guy for that title, like ten clean punches each round on the guy's cranium, I thought this poor guy's gonna die. Forget about a knockout, but he took it like a champ. He got stopped was the fourth round. Yeah, fourth, fourth round, yeah. And we went from there. Who ideally would you like to fight? Next, like if, he, if you know all the ducks. Anybody, were, anybody was the world title belt in the cruiserweight division, gotcha. and if I win the fight, I'll show the yeah. world. Yeah, I will step up to the heavyweight division or the cruiserweight division and collect some belts over there. Gotcha. And who's the who's the best cruiserweight in the world besides you, in your opinion? Well, actually, Myros Reedus, the guy I, I mm -hmm. actually beat, is the best cruiserweight right now. And there's an African guy who's holding the WBC belt, uh, Ilunga Makabu, very strong guy, but I think he can beat him all. Yeah, we, we feel super confident. Um, what about the, I think the cruiserweight division is unbelievable. They're guys over six feet tall, they're 200 pounds, they walk around 215, 220, you walk around 211. Uh, big, strong guys that have to get in shape and make weight. Um, I love the cruiserweight division. Why do you think the cruiserweight division's ignored in the United States? Well, it's basically, uh, like it's a new division, I think, in like 20 years now. The other divisions are older than that one. And there are not many American fighters competing in the division, so more Europeans. And was very well promoted in, the, in, in Europe, so it's the reason I guess. Yeah, it's very sad to see because it, it, it looks like it becomes just a stepping stone to the heavyweight division when really these guys are at their best. I mean, David Hay, when he was a cruiserweight, was unbelievable. And the list goes on and on. Music, Holyfield, I mean, 
they're basically heavyweights in shape. Yeah, heavyweights in shape, exactly. More, more technique, yeah. speed and power together, it's a very dangerous. Even thing. the same fighter, when they beat, when they move up and gain weight, they get slower. And they're not as exciting to watch. But heavyweight, I mean, these cruiserweight fights are very exciting. Uh, do you think you mind the idea of going up? No. No. It's also one of my future goals. If I get a belt at my cruiserweight division, I will step up now to the new bridgeweight division. To get a belt there, then probably the heavyweight. What, what do you guys think of the bridgeweight division? Uh, bridgeweight division is a new division between cruiserweight and heavyweight. It's 200 to 200, 224 pounds. And it's named after, uh, I think, the kid uh, the defended his sister, defended against, his sister the, against, uh, against the attack. But what do you think of the, what did both of you guys said? What do you think of the Bridgeway division? No, you first and then uh, Coach Dino. Well, it's a good idea, especially now because all the heavyweights are so tall, like six foot five, six foot nine, and most heavyweights, they aren't that, that tall, so it's a good bridge, like the weak guy says it. It's a good bridge between the Bridgeway and heavyweight. Do you think it may eventually be bigger? Uh, your thoughts on, because the real heavyweights, like you said, it's really Tyson Fury and guys that are 250, 260, 270. Uh, even Wilder, I don't think. I don't know Wilder's what a, a true bridge away. Was he 220? Uh, you look back at Tyson, Foreman, Ali. Uh, those, those guys, guys are all, are all fit in that class. All fit in that class. Do you think it's going to go? I mean, I think it will because I think you know it's going to be very close to that cruiserweight where guys are in shape. Uh, do you think it might even overtake the for about a lack of? I think the real boxing fans that understand technique and appreciate speed will always lend themselves to these all the smaller divisions in general. As the heavyweight division goes, boxing goes. So when there's a bunch of good heavyweights, but things definitely they slow down. I, you know, I, I could watch bantamweights fight. So it doesn't that you know that as far as it goes. But I think it will catch on because they are going to be really big, strong guys, and uh, there are going to be some knockouts. When guys get over 200 pounds, people want to sleep. So um, I think it's very exciting. It depends also on the competition. You know, if there are good guys in the division and uh, doing exciting fights, it will be well promoted. Do you think guys like Wilder will, will fight Bridgewood? I think he's going to be fighting Charles Martin, if I'm not mistaken. Was that one of you guys telling me? Yeah, I think um, I read that. Um, uh, yeah, I think so, because it's exciting to collect many belts. And how about a guy like a Dillian White or a Derek Chisora? Uh, you think they might, or Povetkin even, you think they might want to move down and get to 225? Like, you know? Maybe, but maybe they're also too heavy. I think, the, big, to, I think the older guys aren't going to want to go on a diet. No one likes to diet. At least of all us. Um, so who do you think is the best heavyweight out there? We mentioned cruiserweights, as Coach Dino did. What, what do you think heavyweights? Who's, uh, well, right now, I think Tyson Fury is the best guy in the division. And because then, of his technique, and he's so versatile, and he's like, smart in the ring. And so you think, let's say, uh, when, uh, him and uh, uh, Joshua, uh, they're supposed to be fighting soon. What do you think that fight's going to look like, or how's it going to go? A very competitive fight. I saw Joshua's fight uh, It's Pulev, and he improved so much, and he was so good, like, countering him in that division. I never saw that doing it just before. So it will be a very tough fight now against him. But uh, I think Tyson Fury got this. And then uh, you think Wilder gets back into the mix with those guys? Um, I, can, I, don't, I don't know. Like he has this comeback fight against Martin, and maybe Tyson Fury will give him a shot, or AJ, like the winner of AJ Tyson Fury gives him a shot at the title. Another guy you guys fought, uh, Yusek. Uh, you never fought Yusek, but you know a lot about him. Uh, he fought Breedis, I believe, and so did you. Uh, what do you think Yusek winds up in the heavyweight division? Or, yeah, well, Bridgeweight slash heavyweight, but he'll probably, you think he'll stay up with those big boys, or he'll, he'll, what do you think about him, and how does he do against a guy like Joshua or a guy like, uh, like Fury with their size? Well, he's, he's very, very skilled, obviously. Good footwork, and he's soft form. He has so much experience, and so in the ring, like doing crazy stuff, so I think he's very good. And he's also uh, like physically strong and also like mentally very strong. So I think uh, he's not too underestimated. You know, I brought up an out of shape Cuban to fight him when he was coming up. <clears throat> fight uh, you said can you? Fight yeah, okay. in, in his in in, uh, in his hometown, and he's really. So I went in the locker room to watch them rap. So I stood next to him and he was he was very polite. They were very nice, but he's really small. He's just not a big guy at all. So I think he'll really have a hard time with the bigger fighters. Um, you know, I don't see, I really don't see anyone beating, uh, beating Fury, to be honest with you, unless he lets him. You know, if he stays on his game, you know, but some, like, he's got a much bigger frame than losing. So I could see him growing into the next division a lot easier with strength and conditioning and proper diet 
but I think the frame of uh, a Rusik is, is much smaller. I think it's a little taller. It's I mean, skinnier. Yeah, smaller, smaller frame. Uh, you know, it's funny, we, when we were training for this fight, he hadn't fought in a long time, and he had to make weight. Um, and I kept telling him, don't worry, it's going to be no problem making the weight. He's like, he was so concerned. I said, I got, I got like a technique to make weight that I learned from UFC fighters that I trained. And he was just, you know, just not feeling it, not excited about it at all. He was not in a very good mood that week. Uh, yeah, in general. In general. Uh, fight week, just... his, his personality changed a little bit, and he gets focused and serious. And I was trying to keep the mood light, so on and so forth. So we do this Epsom salt bath technique to take the weight off. And it seemed too easy and too good to be true. But like in an hour and a half, we knocked down 12 pounds. He got on the scale, made weight no problem, rehydrated. Very simply, didn't have to do a bunch of exercises to, to burn himself out. And what's the and first thing he asked for after that? Coca-Cola. <laughs> well, of course, nobody likes to diet. That's right. <laughs> So we got him, we, and I, I, as, as the mean coach I am, I only give him a quarter of a Coca Cola because it's probably not too good for you. Coach Dino basically drank the whole Coke, but that's what we give him a little bit. But uh, he made weight no problem. But the look on his face when the scale went down so easily was just a look of shock. So it was a nice, it was a great, you know, my actual favorite part of the training camp is the weight cutting because it's so miserable for the fighter and it allows me to be there for them because nobody wants to sit in a bathtub. Or sitting next to a bathtub while someone's taking a bath, you know. Now, fortunately, I've also done it for for Victoria's Secret models as well. It's a lot better, trust me. But nevertheless, um, you know, no one wants to be there, and I want to be there. I want to be there to support them because I can't take the punches for them, but I can sit in the hot, in the steam room with them at least. Um, it's better. It's better than nothing. So uh, it's a really important part of training camp. And I've, I've talked to you before. Uh, let people know, like, what's your favorite part? Like the training, the sparring, the running, the weights, the going into the ring. Uh, we've talked about that before, you know, off, off the camera. Um, let people know what you like about it. What's your favorite part, the process from when you find out you're fighting till after the fight? Well, I love training, that's what I'm doing. But, like, uh, the worst part is the sparring for me, but I love to fight. Like, I, I love the fight date when I walk into the ring. Like, the fight day when you're walking from the hotel to the venue, so I love that. The sparring is like my, my sparring. Why don't you like, why do you hate the sparring? Well, that's like, I'm like, and Dino loves sparring, so. I'm not that motivated for sparring because like it's exercise, but I don't know. Some guys are coming and they, they want to like prove themselves and you are just like doing sparring mm -hmm. just to get your training done. Sometimes you get punched because you're not so focused. And, you know, but I find it a good fight. mental exercise to try to turn it on when you don't have it because I think that sometimes there's going to be fights when you can be distracted because of a death in the family, because of a sickness, because of your own, you wake, you wake the wrong thing, because of an injury. And if you can practice focusing, I think it's going to be that much easier on fight night. So that's what I like about it. I like when some guy is going to spar the international champion number two in the world, and to him it's like his Super Bowl. It's the world title to him. He's got his... He's got his mom or his girlfriend, someone's filming it, and they're so excited and so intense. They're trying to rip this poor guy's head off, and he's trying to like get, get the rounds in, you know? But and what really surprises me is that during sparring, he says he gets punched in the head, which I didn't, thought, I didn't think that happens during sparring. You get punched in the head when you spar? Not, not that much, but sometimes you don't see it. You don't like to get punched at all, also not on your elbows. That's how to motivate yourself every day to fight. Like, the fight how do you really keep? How would you want to keep him motivated when you want to when you know, you're training him? Well, well, one thing we try to do is we try to keep people in here because nobody likes to get beat up in public. That's for sure. So that that you know, it's not work doesn't work for everybody, but in general, we try to keep a lot of energy in the gym. We try to keep it light and fun. Um, those two things we try to bring a variety of sparring partners. The first one to me is always the most important. If you can spar with the guy and then you make adjustments two, two days later, that doesn't happen in real life. In real life, you get it's fight night. That's what you get. You may get a rematch six months later, but you get fight night. What I find also interesting with sparring is people are like, no filming. The guy's 37 and 5. He's been on TV 18 times. I can YouTube his fight. What do you mean no filming? There's a secret punch that he's hiding. We have coaches come here all the time. And I'm glad to have world-class, world-champion coaches with world-champion fighters. No filming. Meanwhile, they have a whole camera crew that follows them every step of the way. And then sometimes they have the audacity to tell us no filming and then put a clip of their guy landing a punch on our guy and then they post it, of course. But nevertheless, uh, the whole thing is it can be exciting. It can be exciting. We just try to make the most of it. So, uh, 
what, what's next? What do you think? I mean, we, we, we've been talking about different things, but what do you want next? You want to fight for the title, obviously. Yeah. Um, when do you think this is going to happen? I hope as soon as possible, maybe in March or later this year, and we'll fight for a big world title, hopefully for the WBC Cruiserweight world title. And that's the main goal. And we, once we achieve that, we'll see what's going next. So what's your biggest thing? Is it your power, your speed, your, your my agility? Se- my secret strength is my power. It's not secret opponents. anymore. Everyone sees yeah, now, but I mean, before, only my opponents I felt that in the, in, in the ring, sparring partners. But yeah, I can box. I have a very good jab, um, a good technique, footwork. I, I work on everything, you know, because you have to adjust to every situation in, in the ring, like a chameleon, you know, because they are fighters. They are, they are also strong. They have punch. They can box. One is moving better. One is faster. So we have to adapt to any situation to, to be the best. And to Beat the best guys out there. Do you feel you? How about your ring generalship? Do you feel pretty confident in the ring that you could adjust, like you said, if something happens? Yeah, I feel in the corners very safe. I feel on the ropes very safe inside the ring. Like I can adjust to any situation. You know, in the corner for his last fight, it was a very calm corner. So we could literally. It felt like we. It's only a minute, but it felt like a lot longer, and we could discuss to make any adjustments. Very. I mean, he's like clearly. We're talking to each other. It's not like um, it's not like a Rocky movie. We're, Come on, you gotta go get him. We're like talking about what we do next. It's very calm. It's very relaxed, and it makes for a good fight. It makes it, it makes winning a lot easier. One last question for each of us, and we'll, we'll get going. We'll, we'll know. First of all, what's your Instagram page at? Noel Mikaelian. Noel Mikaelian. If you want to check out his page, he's got some followers too. One last question: What's your favorite thing about him, and what's your favorite thing about uh, uh, your coach? My favorite thing about him is his energy. Like he has always good mood. He's working so hard, and and he keeps his uh, mood up every day. It's like motivates me too to work. Does he ever get on your nerves? Mm. Only when I make him smile. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you like about Noel? The most in- amazing thing him. is that he can come in the gym. Like for some reason he'll have to like he'll have something he's got to do with his with his like he had to rent a new apartment and then I had to leave I left and came back and he was in the gym alone no timer on he'll punch the bag for an hour straight he won't change bags he won't play music he won't mess around he'll come and bang on the bag for an hour straight and to have that much discipline to have that much focus is something that you can't teach fighters and and when it comes down to it that's what makes champions it's him alone with that heavy bag. That's really what it is. Not those nonsense tricks with mitts. That's nobody, no, no face is coming out and getting your, catching your punches. <laughs> you gotta go get it, just like the heavy bag. And it's, it's impressive that he has the discipline to sit there and do that. So, one quick thing, he's, uh, he might need surgery because he gets mitts <laughs> yeah. with him. He loves mitts, he hates him, so he's got bad shoulders, he's got power, so that's gonna be an issue. But uh, this is our third episode. Uh, thank you for joining us, Noel. Uh, look for Thanks him. For having uh, me to fight and you know hopefully you guys enjoy this podcast and you enjoy the well and the guys we have and we'll keep doing them as long as you keep watching so see you next time I am the greatest I am-